Hello and welcome to our next episode of the Recipients podcast series, where we are talking to recipients of the National Awards for Disability Leadership 2022. And today I am joined by the excellent Stevie Russell Farnham. Let me tell you a bit about Stevie. Through her social enterprise, Empower Me Enterprises, and her work with Women with Disabilities Australia, or WIDA, whom we know very well at the DLI, Stevie has become a powerful advocate for women and girls living with disability, especially the often overlooked invisible disabilities. The willingness to share through her speaking engagements and through social and mainstream media, her personal struggles of living her best life with invisible disabilities is a powerful tool for raising awareness of the disability community. Stevie's communications are about capacity, not incapacity challenging many of the myths in our society about disability. And Stevie is the recipient of the 2022 Award for Social Impact, which is about achieving visibility of disabled people by using mainstream or social media or other digital interfaces. Welcome, Stevie. Great to talk to you today. Thank you so much for having me. It's a, it's a real honour to be here with you. It's it's terrific to finally meet you. Um, I love doing the recipients podcast series. I get to meet these fantastic people who received awards. How did you get into doing this sort of work? What what's driving you to do this? I I think I've I've just always been very honest about my story and my journey. And I started sharing things on Facebook many years ago. I had an accident and had quite a long recovery and I actually started to post about my recovery and I had a lot of family and friends and work colleagues start to reach out to me um, and they just seemed constantly surprised that I, I just kept trying to get on with things and to live the best life that I could despite many challenges and um, people then shared their stories with me about their own challenges with chronic pain with invisible disability in particular. I also felt that there was a big gap and I felt that I was in no person's land for quite a while because I didn't seem to fit anywhere. Um, I didn't seem to be able-bodied enough to fit into the able-bodied world. And I didn't seem to be um, appearing to look um, disabled enough to fit into a disability world. So I felt like I was in no person's land, stuck. And I realized there would be a lot of people in the same boat. So I just started speaking quite frankly and directly and transparently about what my journey looked like and felt like um, and yeah just I've had I've had a tremendous reaction from people where um, it's helped people learn about other people's circumstances and journeys and it's given other people confidence and courage that they too can try things that might have been they might have been told by a doctor that something was out of their um, capability or they might have been um, just lost faith in themselves uh, lost um, confidence, had lower self-esteem. Uh, now I'm very passionate about speaking up even more because I'm particularly conscious of women who are um, living with disability or non-binary people living with disability who have lost sometimes tremendous work opportunities, financial security, stability, um, superannuation. So I'm really passionate now at at speaking up even more because I have a platform. So I think it's best to share it with others. So what are you doing right now? What's the work at the moment? At the moment, so we have uh, two businesses. I have a social enterprise, which is Empower Me Enterprises. And we are constantly trying to advocate for ourselves and for other people in our community. Um, we, we are engaged with a lot of different groups as veterans, as women with disability, um, I'm also bisexual, so I'm also reaching out to this group of um, people as well. And um, the other thing we do is we run a mortgage and finance business. So I'm trying to integrate a lot of financial literacy and empowerment workshops for women and people with um, non-binary people and anyone. Fantastic. So, so yeah, a lot. A lot. <laughs> Keeps us very yes. busy. It's wonderful. I, I often refer to, um, you know, 
members of the disability community uh, and and of the of the disability leadership institute as um, overachievers anonymous you know <laughs> i agree it's so true it is so true <laughs> so, so much going on so you were talking a bit earlier about feeling that um, you didn't belong in either space what are some of the the roadblocks or the barriers that you've experienced um there's been several the first is uh, a tremendous lack of self-confidence at many times in my life, which has taken a lot of a lot of um, determination to overcome or to move through. I don't think one who feels anxiety or experiences anxiety ever um, necessarily overcomes it, but we learn to live with it and we learn to go through it. I've had mental health challenges, which have been greatly impacted by my medical and physical um, conditions. I've had to learn a whole new way of of living life and working and socializing and contributing to the community in a way that um, anyone with any kind of chronic pain or um, fatigue condition or um, mobility condition uh, would also experience. So um, I think the big thing I'm focusing now on is mental health and making sure, I think it's really important that people are surrounded by a medical team and an advocacy team that listens to them. I mean, we are the experts of our own bodies. And that was a massive roadblock for me with the medical institute as a whole. I, I had conditions that they couldn't put in a neat little box. And then I ended up being put in multiple boxes. And while I don't think, um, I don't think, I think it's really important that we look at people, not, not diagnoses. I'm also aware that we can actually feel more empowered when we know more about our conditions, when we learn more, when we talk to experts who value us as a, a lived experience expert as much as we can value them as the expert in a particular condition. They can give us some insight. And um, so the medical, um, the whole medical industry, I've had constant challenges since my accident in, in trying to navigate through that. I've also had extreme um, challenges in the workforce because unfortunately, I have a condition that can flare up day to day. Um, it can change my capacity where I'm seemingly completely able-bodied and then can experience a, a spasm or a seizure and be completely incapacitated. And I won't always get any warning so or much warning between those two conditions. So navigating, building my own business and connecting with a community of like-minded people uh, which is why all the community advocacy has been so important because I see so many allies, um, you know, with, out there and we can all be allies. Um, until a few years ago, I didn't feel that I could even belong to or identify as a woman living with disability, which is ridiculous because I've been living with disability for nearly two decades. So um, it's, yeah, I, I just, I'm, I'm glad that I've met this incredible group of people and community because we all belong to it and we don't need to be told by someone else we belong to it if we self-identify and that's a big empowering step for me and that's what I try to share with others um, and I'm also in, in finding a really interesting space of, of identifying more with the Indigenous community because we have ancestry that we're part of the stolen generation that we've only just been made aware of in the last few years so we're navigating a lot of self-identity and um, I think there are a lot of roadblocks, but I think it's about persevering and also not feeling that we need to be um, operating at 110% all the time because I come from that overachieving um, same group of people who, who want to do our best and sometimes the best we can do is rest. And I just think that I love being part of a community that understands and values that we know our bodies and our minds better than anyone. So our mental and physical health is, is paramount. Oh, yes. Is it, you know, do you think the attitudes of those, you know, people in the wider world, um, you know, you're talking a lot about the lack of understanding and particularly um, when you know, when people can't see that you're disabled. And, mm. and 
do you think that attitude space is developed at all? Is it is it improving or have we still got a fair way to go before we really shift that one? I I think it's I like to think I'm always I remain hopeful. I I like to think it's shifting in the right direction, but I still think there's a tremendous amount that needs to be done. And by that, I'm I'm just I'm constantly aware of tokenism and I see so many examples where people it's almost like oh that's right disability oh we better make sure that we're representing people with disability let's get the token person or let's do the token thing and and that's not good enough um and it's not respectful and I I think it's not that people are trying to not support and do the right thing I think people just aren't sure how and so what I'm loving is the movement amongst the disability community like for example the DLI Disability Leadership Institute that are encouraging people to turn to people within the disability community as the experts and encourage that change with us, alongside with us, not for us or to us, but with us. Um, People who live with disability are experts in living with disability. And I think that the more dialogue there is and the more open and openness there is, and the more um, opportunity we have to have really honest, transparent and frank discussions about what is working really well, what are people, what can we see that's really positive, that's making a difference, and where are the areas that was just not, you know, we're just not meeting the benchmark that we need to be. I mean, in today's day and age 2023, there is no excuse for us not to be a society that is inclusive and accessible and diverse and celebrated for all the contributions that we each have and bring. Um, So things like these awards recognising people's efforts and contributions are really important. And now the next step, I think, is is making sure there should be disability and um, diversity in every workplace, every industry. We, we shouldn't have people who can't get through the front door for an interview. There, there should be no reason why people's expertise can't be shared on a platform that, that works for them, their medical condition, their health, their mental health. Um, I am pleased that the stigma of mental health is being addressed and I'll be completely transparent. I spent seven or eight weeks in a mental health hospital last year, which was an incredibly important step in my own journey and has led me to being in a much better state this year than I was last year. I had some stressors that were really challenging to deal with and I felt this shame and stigma about no one could know and I feared anyone knowing. But the incredible thing is the couple of people that I was really honest with about my journey have felt relief that they can then talk about mental health. I mean, a mental health hospital is no different to a physical health hospital, and yet there's secrecy around it. And I don't think there should be. I think more people would reach out for help, and if more people didn't feel scared to reach out for help, um, then more people would be healthier all around. Ah, yeah. It absolutely it does. So, so what do you think? receiving this award will do to change your work what difference will it make I think it's to be honest and I'd really like to acknowledge Carol who was also in this category she has been an incredible advocate and I am you know I respect her tremendously and I'd like to congratulate Carol for being one of the finalists in this category the the amazing thing and I'd also like to thank her she reached out after the news had been shared and I think that's the show that like that 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 shows me her her grace and um, that's what the disability community should be all about encouraging other people and frankly um, how it's changed my work is I've always been someone to have a go and I've always put my best effort forward um, I've always been very hard on myself and I've always felt that. Um, I had to be perfect and no one is, no one is perfect. I'm far from perfect. But what this award has done, it has restored my faith. One, that what I do is noticed by the community and helps the community. 
the, the, the beautiful person who nominated me, that was a real surprise and I was incredibly grateful. And frankly, when I heard that I was up against, well, I won't say up against because it sounds so competitive and I'm not like Ooh. that. When I was in it's the not same, a competition, absolutely. No, no, it's, not, no, it's not, but when I was in the same category as Carol, I didn't think I stood a chance, to be honest. And, I, and I'm really aware of terminology, so I'll, I'll rephrase that. I didn't think, I thought Carol had it in the bag because she's incredible. And what it showed me was that a smaller voice can still make a big impact. And the camaraderie of Carol contacting me to say congratulations made me love her even more. And that's what I think is really important about what this award represents. Because sometimes when you're doing your best and some days are hard to get through for the multiple challenges that we face, and we all know them, those of us living with disability, what those challenges are, Sometimes it can feel that what we're doing doesn't make a difference mm -hmm. and that if, if, if no one notices and it's not having any impact. And so for me, what it represented was it does. And, and I think that's where I've had more courage to speak up even further. I haven't publicly said to anyone that I was at the mental health hospital last year, but I feel safe and I feel that it's the right platform to share it because I want other people to reach out to our mental health and our disabilities in all their forms, social, uh, sorry, um, psychosocial or physical, intellectual. They're all challenges that we deal with. And if we can deal with them together, then we create a far better, fairer, more equitable society for all of us, especially those that can't speak up for themselves. Fantastic. So that's yeah. what the platform has enabled me to do, have more courage, and also see that what I'm doing makes a difference and, and, and hopefully, hopefully um, um, inspire is, um, I, I prefer another word, motivate other people to share their journeys. Yeah. And, uh, and of course, um, Stevie there is referring to the wonderful Carol Taylor, um, who is a quadriplegic uh, fashion designer and has, in fact, I don't, as we're recording this, um, just released um, her latest collection, which is of adaptable clothing, which is really exciting That's stuff. That's amazing. Mm. She really is. She really is. Oh, what's next for you, Stevie? What are you, what are you planning on now? Well, I would love, um, there are so many, there are so many, I won't just say ideas because there are action plans in place at the moment. Um, one of the th big things I'd like to do is I would like to get into schools I would like to work with youth and I would mm -hmm. like to share my empowerment workshops. I would like to see more young people with disability shining and thriving and having opportunity and access. I, I'm, I'm a registered teacher in Queensland. I would like to be reaching out to the schools in Queensland and supporting the teachers with disability as well. I was a teacher with disability and um, there were tremendous roadblocks in my way and I don't want any teacher out there feeling that they need to leave the profession because they have a disability that's not supported. Um, I also have huge goals in my local and the wider Australian community. I would like to get my financial workshops reaching out to more people. I don't want people... Um, I, I value so much... We can't look after our health if we don't have the financial means to do so or the access to do so. So it's really important to me that people have access and I'd really like to offer financial literacy workshops to the wider community, especially women and men and non-binary people in the disability community. Um, and I'd like to release my book. I wrote a book a couple of years ago about my own journey. And honestly, I've never felt that it's been finished. And then I realised... When it's your story, it's never finished because your story is always evolving. But I feel now that it's the right time. I've got the courage and the confidence to be able to share that. And I hope that that encourages other people living with disability to realise that um, we are powerful and we don't owe anything to anybody except to be living as real a life as possible and as honest about our journey as possible if we choose to share that journey and our story with us in a, with, within a safe space. We don't owe 
we don't owe ourselves to others, but if we want to share our story with others, then I hope my story will encourage others that they're not alone. I wish I had met this amazing group of people and community 20 years ago because I felt very isolated and I felt the disability was something that we had to hide and something we had to be ashamed of and something that we, took us out of the running for achieving amazing things and that is not true. No. In fact, not at all. Yeah. It's, it's sometimes that adversity that actually we turn around and realise, wow, I've actually achieved beyond what I thought I could and, and, and that adversity has shown us coming out the other side and maybe being better people for it. And I'm not saying that I wish anyone had to live with their disability because I certainly wish that, you know, mine are incredibly challenging at times, and, um, but I think that we can get through it. And, and be oh, more, more more empathetic people for it. It's it's so um it's so exciting to hear you talk the way you're talking. Uh, you know we I've often said um you know if you want you know to find resilience then disabled women particularly are some of the strongest people I've ever met. And you know it's it's just um, astonishing how we can be so sidelined and. Uh, you know, disregarded, um, mm -hmm. particularly in professional standing and particularly um, when it comes to um, having our expertise recognised. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, you know, um, the, the disabled women I know and non-binary folk um, are just astonishing people. And we've got so much to offer. Yeah. Having a little bit of a moment there, everyone. It's <laughs> so, yeah. But it's so true. And I think this is mm -hmm. where um, I'd love to see a real change in the future is when I was told by a doctor that I needed to leave my teaching profession because the teaching profession couldn't support me to thrive in that environment with my disability that was gut-wrenching and I realized that and it's something I'd love to explore more so if anyone is keen to explore the idea with me please reach out I, I have this um I turn I, I call it career scaffolding because I have had careers I was a pay clerk in in the army reserve I wanted to be a police officer and was transferring to become move into the military police I was a youth worker I became a teacher I had a passion for, for learning and for teaching and for helping the community and I was also really interested in business and I felt that when I had to when I was told you can't teach anymore. You physically can't teach anymore. I, I've never handled being told no particularly well. I've always been very, very determined. And it, it, really, it, it really drove me. But I've realised that sometimes we have to move or change or pivot our careers because of our physical or psychosocial conditions. But what we can always do is we can always take, we don't lose that part of who we are. We don't, I didn't lose being a teacher. So career scaffolding to me is how can we pivot and still be the, you know, bring that expertise that we all have in different industries, but how can we do it in such a way that it's, it's supportive? Because for me, it was like this. I was, I was really sort of reaching around in the dark thinking I've, I've, I felt like I'd lost my identity in a professional sense. And I had to re-scaffold and rebuild it again from scratch. And then I realised, you, Stephanie, you don't have to start from scratch. You've got all these skills and you've got all this experience and you've got all these qualifications. What can you do with that to build the next part of, you know, to build the next part forward? Um, for example, people who have accidents, like I had an accident and overnight it changed my life. Some people have a progressive condition. Some people have time and warning. Other people get, 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 have no time or warning and things happen. Um, I, I would just love to see um, somehow that the professional industries can, or the, the disability community can help people scaffold their next career move so that people aren't sitting at home or lying at home feeling that they can't contribute anymore. 
that they don't have to give up um, unless their condition is such that they, they, they choose to stop doing something. I want people to still feel that they're as equally valued as a professional than they were before. Does that make sense? Mm, absolutely, it does. Oh, yes. Look, we're almost out of time today. We could talk all morning. It'd be really lovely, wouldn't it? Um, one question I like to ask everybody, Stevie, is um, who is a leader you admire and why? Oh, um, there are so many leaders that I admire. Um, to be honest, and it might sound, maybe this is left field, but my mum would be the leader I admire. She's a woman who's lived with disability her whole life, multiple challenges in terms of psychosocial, physical, yet she's never given up and she's always helped me believe that nothing is impossible. Um, that I can find a way and especially particularly bad pain flare-ups where I've been thinking that there's no quality of life. She's the one that's said this, this too will pass, this pain flare-up will pass um, and it did and it does and I'm in pain every day but the pain fluctuates and some days are a lot better than others. So, um, you know, she... Yeah, she's my inspiration in terms of leadership, in terms of what women and non-binary people can do who live with disability. Fantastic. Strong women. Out with others. Yeah. Oh, strong women. Strong women rule. It really is true. It's a, it's a thing. Oh, Stevie Russell Farnham, thank you so much for talking with us today. And congratulations once again on receiving the 2022 National Award for Disability Leadership for Social Impact. Thank you so much, Christina. Thank you very much for having me.